Hey everyone, welcome to the Clydesdale Fitness and Friends. My name is Scott Switzer. I am your host and I am the Clydesdale. I love to do fitness and these are my friends. Hello. What's going on everyone? I'm a friend. So we are going to lead off this week's uh, discussion with the Masters Fitness Collective where Kat and I actually got to hang out, see live working out for time and speed and reps. And it was awesome. So awesome. Super fun. A lot, lot of work. Was it a lot ton of work? So much work. <laughs> and, and I was just a bit player. Mm. The, the Mac daddy and the daddy Mac up there on the screen, cat shear. <laughs> she, um, she killed it this weekend and deserves a ton of kudos. Um, I don't think I'm speaking out of school to say that the people who ran the competition, this was their first ever big event. And because of that, there were, there were things that they didn't foresee. Okay. Um, and thank goodness there were a few top notch volunteers that have seen these things before, uh, and were able to multitask and get us through to a point where nobody really noticed. And one of those being our friend. Friend. So are you going to divulge any of that or are you just going to leave that? Well, I mean, we can talk a little bit about it. So it's just, you know, um, things you don't think about. Like you get to the floor and you plan for a hundred foot handstand walk and you only have 80 feet worth of floor to do it. Okay. (laughs) You have to change it, right? And it doesn't seem like a big deal that you change that, but guess what? There's scorecards that are written that have a hundred feet on it. And the hundred feet play into the cumulative score on the score sheet for somebody to get, you know, the total number of reps in a workout. And so if it's really not a hundred, it's 80 when you're doing it in five foot increments, you know, you have to change the look of the scorecard or else your judges are going to get all screwed up. And then you got to change the scoring on it so that your scoring guy doesn't get all screwed up. So there's just, it's like a domino effect when things sure. get changed that just required a lot of, um, a lot of last minute, um, scrambling if you will. Um, so yeah, that was fun. I mean, that's, I like to do that kind of stuff. I like to solve problems. I, I thrive on things going wrong and trying to fix them. So it was, I had a blast. It was super fun. And there yeah. was plenty of, plenty of things that got changed last minute that, you know, needed to get fixed. I would say from a 30,000 foot, um, the, the biggest thing for me was when you're at a big competition, there are roles um, that people have dedicated because those roles are important and they kind of combine those into different areas. And so it just gets it a little, a little wonky behind the scenes, but I think that we pulled it off in a way that nobody really noticed. Yeah. That's Except awesome. for those backstage. Sure. Yeah. And I mean, the feedback from the, from the athletes around the judges, at least, which was, you know, my primary responsibility was that the judges seemed really relaxed um, and, and in control. And, you know, one of the athletes even compared it to Wadapalooza and said at Wadapalooza, the judges seemed really frazzled. And he said, you know, that doesn't help me at all when I'm about to, you know, start an event and I'm anxious and my judge is freaking out, you know, or my judge isn't quite sure what's going on either. So the fact that we were able to sort of keep it together um, for the athletes was, you know, that's like, that's like the only thing that matters. Right. And I think all the judges left the weekend with a positive experience and they, they had a lot of fun, which is great. And I think the athletes, you know, went away with this was a top notch competition and wow, I can't wait to do it again. That's awesome. And, and the judge crew was so fun to hang out with. Um, they just were good people, uh, loved to chit chat. Um, you know, we got to know each other really well, made a ton of new friends, people that I've never met before, um, which was really cool. Yeah. And that's easy to do when there's only like 10 of you. (laughs) We were skeleton crew the whole weekend. Like those judges on the floor worked their tails off. So it felt more like a local comp from a judging perspective and it did like a big event. Sure. Um, Cause like when I've judged regionals, there's like three full teams 
that, and usually two per lane if there's like a lot of equipment. So to go to 10 and we have 10 lanes, it was, it was a lot. And the first day being all outside, starting freezing cold by the pool at what, 5.30 in the morning? In the dark. The first event was literally, it was dark outside. To going to blazing hot sun at the baseball stadium. I barely made it through that day. <laughs> that Honest rough. to God. Like I had to pull myself for a couple heats because I thought I was going down. So how, <laughs> how was Fort Wayne though? Like how was it just being in Fort Wayne? Was I it- don't know. I saw like three blocks of it. <laughs> You know, now that's a lie. That first day when we were running for all the stuff we needed to well, find, that's true. we were we were all over places. <laughs> yeah, didn't People you have to go to and stuff? We did. Yep, we had to get score some score sheets printed out, and yeah, we did some errands. Um, yeah, people are great. I mean, every time I go to a to a location in the Midwest, I fall in love with it, and I want to move there. Oh, yeah, okay. I could, well, come on, come on over. Yeah, we, could we totally picture myself to there. Yeah. <laughs> um, super super the, nice. The best part of Fort Wayne is I rode a scooter for the first time. <laughs> and uh, now I'm part of the Butter Gang. <laughs> Scooty Gang. Scooty Scoot Gang. Scooty Gang. Scoot gang. <laughs> oh my gosh, it was so much fun. Um, wasn't sure like I still had the balance at 50 to like hop on one of those. Oh yeah, I got the balance. Oh yeah. And it was so much fun. You like uh, hopped a curb, didn't you? I did. I Sweet. hopped a curb. Yeah, it was like, I, as I was getting more courageous, I was like, Maybe I should slow this down before I end up in the <laughs> ER. Uh, but yeah, it was a blast. And we got, to, we got celebrity sightings in Fort Wayne. What? In the Who? CrossFit what? world. What? Had the Buttery Bros. Okay, yeah. Tommy Marquez. Uh, ooh, ooh. We had Matt O'Keefe. And um, out of nowhere, a little bit of Danny Broflex. Oh, what? yeah. Yep. He had the wig on and everything. Oh, that's awesome. I can't wait. Yep. New season coming. Love it. That was pretty cool. Yeah. And then they showed up at the competition on day three. Uh, and costume. And costume. Yeah. Yep. That was pretty awesome. And you, I'm guessing what? those were all Bobby Petrus's costumes. So Bobby Petrus is the guy that sort of put this whole thing on. Hmm. Um, he's a local from Fort uh Fort Wayne, and he owns Mad Apple CrossFit. He's one of the co-owners of that. So I think those guys were staying at his house. Um, they went his to house. a costume shop. Oh, they did? Are you sure? Yeah. yeah, it was on the Buttery Bros. Oh, did they release that already? Or yeah. was that like on their story yeah. or something? They went to a costume shop and tried on ah. stuff. Mm-hmm. Okay, because I know Bobby's a huge Batman fan. He's got like one of those tri- trike motorcycles that looks just like the Batmobile. Oh and God. he's got a Batman costume that's pretty legit, so... And it was fun yeah. seeing they actually worked out a couple times. Um, yeah, were you going to ask Amy who was who with the costumes? Um, so Aquaman was Mars, mm-hmm. right? Um, Heber. What? Oh, Heber no. was Aquaman. No, Mars was Aquaman with the dreads. Okay, I, I thought so too. But go ahead. I thought, I thought it was Heber. Uh. No. Spider-Man, Spider-Man was Tommy. Okay, yeah. Um, I <laughs> thought Batman was Mars. No, it's Heber. And then Julian was uh, Wolverine. Yes. Yep. He's a funny guy. They, so we hung out um, after the competition. Uh, Bobby had a little get-together with some of his friends, and uh, those guys were staying with him. And they kept calling me Delaware. Like when they found out, you know, Jules is like, where are you from? I said, Delaware. He's like, we, we, we've been talking about Delaware. We want to go to Delaware. And you're so like, come on over. I, I, I think I might have convinced them to come and I'm going to try to figure out how to parlay that into some CrossFit event or something that they can come to and they can hang out and stay because they were very intrigued by the, the small wonder, the first date. That's awesome. Yeah. They're great guys too. Fun to hang out with. Just super chill, laid back. Cool. Yeah, Julian never stops dancing, ever. He's so funny. Ever. I yeah, love he's that. A party. Love that. 
Yeah, it uh, cool. And the athletes were really fun to be with. Um, the athletes in other competitions, they're, they're so serious. These, these guys were, I mean, they were serious cause they, they did win some decent prize money. Uh, but you know, they were like fist bumping or elbow bumping or whatever they were okay with and chatting with you before the event. Um, it was very, a very different atmosphere than like the open, the open uh, division. Nice. Yeah, good people. With the exception of a few, but yeah, they were good people. I mean, there's yeah. always going to be that. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. <laughs> I had a run in with uh, one of the athletes during the last event. He was literally heckling me from his lane as he was working out um, for something that I didn't even know rep him on. I just kind of gave him a little bit of a reprimand. And uh, yeah, it was, it, was, it was sketchy there for a second. I, I wanted to punch him in the face. Really? And, uh, yeah, and we made, we made up at the after party. So okay. he actually turned out to be – He it was funny. People had mentioned him all weekend and said what a great guy he was. And yeah. so I really wanted to like him. Yeah. <laughs> and I just couldn't <laughs> at first because of the way, you know, we got off on a really bad foot. But, no, we're, we're cool now. We, we should have him on the podcast. I'll try to get him on. Okay. Should, should we, we bring do. it up specifically when he's on here about how we didn't like oh, him? Oh, now we do? for sure. I mean, that was the – that was the story of the after party, you know, when he got there, it was, it was a big deal. So. Okay. All right. Yeah. Yeah. I had one athlete that I had no repped seven times and it took her from first to fourth. Oh yeah. She was not happy with you. Yeah, they were legit happy. though. And the cat cat said, I would have no repped her three more times. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> I, Cause I was watching. Yeah. I would have, you, you bro repped her a couple times. So. Hey, that was hey. Legit. hey. My angle well, not was on not purpose. the best. Yeah. Not on purpose. My angle was not ideal. Well, it should be. <laughs> okay. Okay. No brew reps. So we had a great time. We hope that it continues to be there because that was a fun little place. Uh, and the way the hotels and the convention center were set up, very ideal for a competition. So yeah, easy right to get there. back and forth. Yeah. Uh, Brodowski, you got to come next year. I will for sure. Yeah. And get on, get on the Scooty Gang. Scooter gang, scooter gang, scooter gang. I'll be on the judge gang. Um, so I found out that Eric Rosa was going to be on Pursuing Health yesterday. Yeah. I was really excited about that. Did you guys get to listen? I have not listened to it yet, but um, I can't wait. And I've seen snippets of it, but I haven't, you know, like gotten a chance to hear the whole episode. So just a quick recap, uh, because Julie got a lot out of him that we hadn't heard before. Okay. Um, he really opened up more about himself and kind of his path to owning CrossFit. So he tried, he wanted to buy CrossFit back, gosh, to, like early. I can't remember if it was either like 2012 or 2014. I think mm. when they tried to sell it, when it kind of was up there in the air a bit before, he tried to buy it and it, he kind of got block, blocked out. Um, but he talked about how, like when he sold his company, it's not generally the case that you stay on with a company for a long period of time. Right. That's not, you know, you're usually there for like a year to kind of help with the transition and then you move on. And he stayed with Oracle for like four or five years after they bought the company. And he decided like, it's not his company anymore and he just needed to move on. And he had a lot of offers for like board of director positions mm -hmm. with, with, eight, with places that he believed in. So he kind of jumped to that and he started to go into a depression because he says, I consider myself a player coach. Like I'm a leader, but I like to get my hands dirty and be a part of it. Mm -hmm. And being on the board of directors, you don't get to play. Yeah. You just kind of sit up there. So, and it, then, then at the same time, his, um, his mother got gravely ill out of the blue. She had started CrossFit at like 70 some years old, um, was getting healthier and then um, ended up getting really sick and passing away. And so that's when he stepped away from Oracle completely. Um, or yeah, with, from Oracle completely and was really in a funk and, and a depression. Then this opportunity came open to buy CrossFit and it, it gave him like a light again. Mm -hmm. And uh, he really kind of went after it. But 
but during that time he, he talks about learning journaling and meditation and things like that to kind of get him through that depression time. Mm-hmm. Um, but the interesting facts that kind of came out of the story of buying cross it were he and Greg met, there's like a, an agreement that gets put together that we knew they made an agreement not to, to, um, uh, show it to anybody else, you know, that it was exclusive until they kind of figured out the, the money situation. Mm-hmm. And Eric wrote that himself. He didn't even let lawyers get involved. Whoa. Oh, that's uh, kind of wrote it up and they finalized the specifics of the deal before Eric went to get investors. And the key to that is Eric then had kind of full ability to design the way he wanted it to go. And then he said, he went to investors and said, this is what we're doing. Do you want to come along with yeah, us? You want in. Not bring the investors in and then them have say as to how it's going to go. Sure. He kind of designed it up. So I thought that was really interesting. He also talked about um, having a, a DEI summit every quarter uh, to work on diversity uh, and inclusion. That's, that's a good call. And um, he also talked about the board makeup. So there is a board of directors. It is seven people. One of them is him. Two are from the investment group and four are independent. And that is very unusual that the independents outweigh the people with the money. So I'd be curious to know, is there anybody on the board of directors? um, are, Are there any people of color? He has not announced who the board of direct- directors are yet. Okay. Uh, so we don't know. Okay. Um, but he, what he did say is he wanted it to be more independent because he wants people to call him out. Yeah. Um, if, it, if they feel that it's necessary. So I thought that was really, really interesting. Um, it's definitely worth a listen. I, I think it's under an hour. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's, it's really good. So if you, if you want, check it out. A lot of it is a little bit redundant from the town hall. Um, but, but there were, there were a couple of things that came out that were very different. So, and now we'll move on to the athlete, athlete advisory council, which is what one of the things that came out of the town hall yeah. that he was going to bring on four athletes that are not participating to give input as to the safety um, the competition, what a competition should look like. And he announced who those people were today. And the four are Annie Thor's daughter, Meredith Root, Neil Maddox, and James Hobart. Ooh, I like, I like. So I thought that was a pretty good um, group of four. Yeah. Um, one thing I didn't, I did not know that James Hobart was a lawyer. I didn't know that either. Yeah, me neither. Whoa. So, and then Meredith Root is, um, she works in um, biopharmaceuticals. Mm-hmm. Yeah, she's a smart cookie. Mm-hmm. Um, and then you have Annie, who's been around the sport for a very long time. Um, and Neil Maddox, who is they talked about, they talked about like, because of his experience trying to make a football team and going through that process, that's one of the reasons they wanted him on there. And he's been a master's athlete. Yeah. I think that's good. I'm excited. So is this, is this instead of, in addition to like this, the athlete union thing, what is that called? The The PFAA. Yeah. I believe it's an addition to. Okay. Okay. So I think this is a CrossFit hired group, Mm -hmm. not an independent, not the athletes independent group. Got it. Good. I think that's important. I think that it's important to have both. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. I just wanted to make sure that they weren't trying to do this instead of. Right. Right. So these are more like employees of CrossFit. I mean, I don't know if they're like full time or anything like that, but it's a way for them to be on the inside and give information when you're trying to be a little secretive about some things along the way. And then when you present them to 
the PFAA, then they can give additional information. They're like professional muses, right? For Dave Castro. Yeah. Perhaps. So are you done talking about that part? Because I was thinking about something that you forgot to mention when, okay. you were, when you were talking about the big weekend that you guys had. Yeah. Okay, because oh, yeah. something else really, really, really big happened. Yeah. And as of just right now, there are 83,000 views. Holy crap. On the new CrossFit documentary, which is about da, 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 our host, the Clydesdale, Scott Schweitzer. Winds of change. Pretty awesome. Yeah, it's it's been a crazy five days or whatever it's been. It seems like a lot. Um, I mean, I've watched it like a bajillion times since Scott. Yeah, same. My husband's like, are you watching that again? And I was like, yeah, you know, I just need to check it. Just make, make sure. Yeah, um, it, it went down, the way it went down was kind of crazy. It was super crazy. <laughs> so we, we worked all day Friday. Um, we didn't get out of the convention center till almost eight o'clock. Yeah, it was late. And we went to grab something to eat. And so we ordered, I'm sitting there and I get a, a Facebook message from one of the other judges saying, I just went home and I pulled up YouTube and you were there. I was like, what? Yeah, my podcast, I know. <laughs> right. <laughs> and so uh, I went and looked and I got really, really teary eyed. And so I got really quiet. I don't even know if Kat noticed. Well, I did because you were like glued to your phone for another 12 minutes. Yeah. Because you were watching it, right? Right, I did. I watched it like by myself, kind of. I got the volume way low. I just wanted to see it before anybody else kind of. And so when I was done, I like was really teary eyed. And so I just kind of tried to gather myself and then I text Kat. Yeah. To say the documentary is out. And her response was. <laughs> <laughs> right. I'm white. <laughs> and uh, so then she said, can I show it? And I reluctantly said, yeah. So she put her phone up on the table and like everybody kind of gathered around and, yeah, and we watched, watched it. it. It was super cool. That's so awesome. Yeah. Cause I, I guess, I think what happened was when you were watching it, Eliana had FaceTimed me. And so I was on FaceTime with Els while we were like ordering food. So I wasn't super like, you know, noticing like what you were doing, but yeah, when I got your text, I was just like, wait a minute, what, what just, what just happened? crazy yeah very very cool really and so you've been bombarded yes i'm sure what what had a handful of requests to appear on podcasts um got a a request today to read books to a second grade class um it's just bizarre like the weird things that i've been asked to do um but very exciting um i love the way it came out Mm -hmm. Um, I'm really happy with the way it came out. If I just had one little editorial thing I'd like to say is I wish they would have said what my A1C was today. Oh, okay. Well, let's put it out there. What is it? So my A1C today is (gasps) 5.3. I've had it as low as 4.6. But still, even with the bounce back, which we talked about in the documentary, I still... I'm no longer a diabetic. Mm -hmm. I still have my A1C very low um, and not even in the risk area of diabetes. So that's the only thing I wish they would have put kind of in there to show that I I have learned how to eat differently. Mm -hmm. And that um, even though I put weight back on, I'm still healthier than I was when I started. For sure. Well, and, and now it seems like there's this other podcast that we should have you on that talks about the story behind the story, <laughs> right? It's called Beyond the Journal with Clydesdale and Cat, where we take journal mm-hmm. stories and we fill in the gaps, right? Sounds so, like an awesome podcast. Perfect. Perfect opportunity. Perfect. To be on your own podcast. Yeah. <laughs> Again. Yeah. <laughs> the host and the guest. 
again. <laughs> yeah. And one, one thing I, you know, now that we're kind of done with the documentary, I am very blessed by that documentary. The stories that people are sending in are amazing. The things they've gone through and that they feel they can share with me because I've shared mine has been unreal. Uh, and I, and I just feel completely blessed by that. And I hope that I can help them through whatever they're going through. Um, and so I, I hope that that's what my purpose is with all this is to just talk with other people who are going through the same things I am and help them along the way. Yeah, for sure. But about that other podcast, I do have to give a quick shout out. Yes, please. Quick shout out to our friend, Patrick Clark. Uh, because he did this for us free of charge. Uh, but he took pictures of Kat and I at the event for our opening and closing of the podcast on YouTube. Uh, and he did an awesome job and they came out so good. And I just want him to get a little recognition for that. Nice. So He's the man. thank you. All right. So a little bit of sad news. Um, we lost one of our own uh, this, this past weekend or last week, end of last week. Uh, a firefighter who was fighting the California wildfires actually was a podium finisher as a master's athlete at the CrossFit Games in 2013. His name was Mike Fournier, and uh, he died in a helicopter crash as they were trying to fight those awful California wildfires. Uh, and so our, our thoughts, prayers go out to his family and his friends uh, during this difficult time because uh, you know, he was there trying to protect all those residents of California and uh, ended up losing his own life. So yeah, just want to, just want to tragic. Yeah. And just to clarify, he wasn't, he, he isn't actually a firefighter. He's a pilot. So he, he owned, he, he flies helicopters, I think like in the private sector and they contracted him and his company or his fleet to do water drops for the thing. So we technically he's not like, I don't want us to misrepresent. He's not a firefighter, but he's was obviously working in fighting that fire. If that makes sense. Yeah. It doesn't diminish the sacrifice no, he made not at all. Uh, one bit. Uh, nope. And so very tragic. Well, and they actually, they named the last workout 40 a after they him. did. So that was nice. And we had a moment of silence that morning. Um, it was, it was, it was nice to give him some recognition. It was, and that was a brutal last workout. Whew. I don't know what CJ was thinking, but that those workouts were no joke. <laughs> All right, so let's lighten things up a little bit. Let's do it. We were hoping that Charlie was going to join us because mm. uh, we do have the results of the nutrition challenge. Uh, but I do want to kind of hold that off till Charlie's here. Ah. <sighs> Okay, we'll just wait. So uh, we'll get those to you in November. <laughs> <laughs> right. Oh, Charlie. Um, I'm actually excited to give you those numbers, uh, but we'll, we'll I'm wait. Till... Confident. I'm feeling very confident because I'm feeling Charlie's numbers are fake because he's not here, so he can't defend them. Yeah, they can't be substantiated. Yep, they're fake. Okay. We'll, to, we'll, we'll wait for the full audit. Negative numbers. <laughs> All right, well, let's go to our stupid questions of the week. Scott just reminded me of the pictures I've seen of Charlie's before and after. He's probably right. <laughs> <laughs> okay, sorry, go on. All right, so our first stupid question of the week is the most embarrassing moment excluding this podcast, <laughs> like telling Ben Smith to keep practicing having children, uh, like telling Asking Ber Mike Bergener, if you can show him your snatch, I mean, are they all me? They're all me, right? Uh, well, as, as a man and a husband <laughs> and a coach, um, I don't think they're all yours. Oh, great. <laughs> I find no problem with that. <laughs> Wait, qu clarification. How many embarrassing moments are we giving? One, one. one. Everybody's in agreement. We're giving one. One. Yes. Mine's, okay. mine's a long story, so you better okay. let me you go, go ahead first. And start then, Kat. That with a long story, that's shocking. 
<laughs> so kindergarten. This this has scarred me for a very long time, just so you know, because we're talking kindergarten. That's unfair. Yeah. Okay. Um, we have two classrooms with like a Jack and Jill bathroom in between, right? Like a little bath with stalls. I have to go to the bathroom really bad. I can't remember my teacher's name. And for some reason, I feel like I need to know her name in order to ask to go to the bathroom. So mm -hmm. I'm struggling and I'm sitting and I'm waiting and I'm struggling. And I finally, I don't know, either just ask her, remember her name, not really sure. Need to use the bathroom. This is like day two, probably day one of kindergarten. I run into the bathroom, I run into the stall. I look at the toilet. It's attached to the wall. It's a urinal. It, it looks like a baptismal font because I'm a good Catholic six-year-old. It's the first time I've ever seen one. And I'm like, okay, this is kindergarten. This is how this works. This is a big, big girl toilet. I drop trowel. I sit. It was now we're talking little kids. So it wasn't a urinal that went all the way down to the ground. It was just mounted to the wall, right? At like growing height. <laughs> so I turn around. I sit down. I do number two because <laughs> that's what I had to do. <laughs> Uh, I turn around, go to flush it, and there's like a screen, you know, over top, so it doesn't really go anywhere. And I'm like, the oh. the urinal cake? Is that what you mean? The urinal? <laughs> I don't know what it was. <laughs> and I exit the bathroom. <laughs> um, yeah, so I took a dump in a urinal when I was six, and probably one of my most embarrassing moments that I like. I can vividly remember all the details of that day. Now I never got in trouble. I don't. No one ever called me out. I like the poor janitor who had to clean it or whoever, I feel terrible, but I didn't, I didn't know. Didn't know. As a teacher and as a mom. <laughs> as I one who poops. About that. I want, I want to help six year old cat. I mean, who would do, why would there be just a urinal stall in that, in a, uh, I don't know, whatever. Mm. It happened. A funny quick it. story is when I was no. in college, I, um, I lived in a, an apartment that used to be a nightclub. And so our bathroom actually had a urinal and a toilet. Oh, interesting. It was nice. Okay. Convenient. Okay. I'm going to add, a, I'm going to add to the urinal story. Then we had a friend once that, um, in their, in their man cave downstairs, they had a urinal and Nathan went with me one time, um, to this friend's house and we came up and we left and he goes, mom, they must have a lot of money. <laughs> They have a urinal in their basement. Because that's a sign. That's the sign. Yeah. Of riches. Oh, I love it. Yeah. So and, I have a I have an oh. old blog and I actually wrote a whole blog post on that episode. Like, yeah. yeah. You should check it out. All right. Go ahead. What you got, Amy? Okay. So this this is embarrassing. So I love doing high kicks. Like when I get excited, I have all this energy and I either dance or I'll be like, woo, high kick. Like pretend like I'm a cheerleader. <laughs> so, and I always joke around with friends like, woo, I'm going to do high kicks tonight. We're going to have a good night. So we sign up to do this tap and run, which is a two and a half mile run. And then like every so often you have to stop and take a shot of beer and so it's like combining, you know, having, getting friends that don't normally run, you get them to sign up because you're like, oh, there's beer involved. And so we go in and get all these friends involved and we do this. And then we decide after the run, we go and go to the um, bar and there's a band playing and we're all just partying and drinking. And they're like, Amy, high kicks. <laughs> so I go to do a high kick and I kicked a little bit too hard and landed right on my ass. <laughs> so... <laughs> I was quite embarrassing because I was definitely an adult, um, definitely um, a mom of two kids, and high kicking in a bar and falling on my butt. So there you go. <laughs> and That's I can great. picture you doing it. Yep. I mean, just like it was yesterday. All right. So uh, picture 500 plus pound Scott. Okay. He's heading to work downtown Columbus, middle of winter. So my office building used to be right on the river. Mm -hmm. so it was freezing in the winter time the wind would come across that river like crazy so i'm in my bears parka you know bright orange and i have to walk like a block and a half to my building i get there and there's um steps up like five steps 
And then it's all marble because it's like an old time government building. So as much as Fat Scott can jog up the steps, I was kind of jogging up the steps to get in the building, hit the top step and tripped with like all of my work stuff in my hands, face first onto this marble floor and just spread eagle. Now it's probably six o'clock in the morning. This is when I was a workaholic for the state. So I was like the first one in the door. And so I do the like quick burpee bounce up. Well, in my mind, it was a quick like burpee bounce up. <laughs> and like looked around like, did anybody? And like, no. Okay. Pick up my stuff. Roll into the building. And at the front desk is a security guard laughing his ass off. <laughs> watching Aww. it on, on the TV over and over and over again. <laughs> oh, that's embarrassing. Oh, that's awesome. And asked me to join him in the watching. And I was <laughs> and like, nah, I'm good. <laughs> That's great. Oh. Oh. All right. So second stupid question of the week. This one's more CrossFit related. And not stupid, by the way. I love it's this not, question. It's not really stupid. No, I love it. If you were putting together a super team to win the CrossFit Games, two women and two men, who would it be? And the caveat is you cannot pick someone who has won the games. Okay. Amy, you're first. Okay. You, you will probably be surprised by mine. Oh, I'm, I'm betting I know one of them. Oh, no, you're wrong. Sorry. Oh. <laughs> okay. my, my female team. Jamie Green. I knew it. Bethany Shadburn. Nice. Okay. That's the one you won't be surprised by. You'll be surprised by this next one. Okay, ready? My my guy team. Jacob Hepner. And Noah Olson. <laughs> Shocked indeed. What? Yep. I feel like what? I feel like Noah's getting there, man. I, I'm just, I'm just being up front. He's been in the game a long time. He is right up there, and he is definitely improving. Okay. Okay. I thought about it more, so I'll go second. I don't hate it. I'll go, I'll go second. Okay. Um, because I thought about it more as like from a team perspective, like the elements that you would need as a team. Not necessarily like the four best. Okay. Okay. You so clap. you need a leader, right? You need a leader, someone who's been there, someone who can get it done. Scott Pancheck. Okay. And you need someone that he can communicate with. Saxon Pancheck. Saxon Pancheck. Mm-hmm. And they're kind of different athletes, right? Yeah. yeah. You know, Scott's more of a sprinter and kind of like low to the ground and a little bulkier where Saxon's like leaner, can run, do all that kind of stuff. Uh, so, it's, and then you got to have the gymnast, right? So got to have Carrie Pierce. Okay. Yeah. That's yeah. And then you got to have someone who can lift and do all that grunt work. Sarah okay. Sigmund's daughter. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. So that, I like those. I like those picks. There's some overlap on mine and here's what I did. Okay. I have two answers because here's what I did. It makes sense. I did a domestic, a U.S. domestic team, and I did an international team because <laughs> I was having trouble. Okay, picking. let's hear it. Okay, so U.S. team, ladies, Carrie Pierce, Amanda Barnhart. I was just about to Wolf. say Amanda Barnhart. Right? right? About that, Scott. So I'm, I'm down with that. My guys, Scott Panchik, Chandler Smith. Yep, also down with Boom. that. Okay, that's my U.S. team. Two very my international athletes, team, but okay. What'd you say? Two very similar athletes, but okay. That's okay. They're going to win. International, Jamie Green. Uh-huh. Laura Horvath. We've been talking about that. We, that. She is looking good. Pat Vellner. Oh. Because Pat Vellner and BKG. Okay, I'm down. 
international. That that international team could be the team. I just felt very unpatriotic picking those four. <laughs> so I wanted to give a shout out to my U.S. based killer athletes. Yeah, I'm down. Love with those it. teams. Yeah, yeah. I think Good I one. think those came out well. Those yeah. are fun. Yeah, yeah. Good stuff. All right, so now we're going to talk about next week's release. And this one's going to be a little bit different. Yeah, I'm really excited for this one. Um, you worked really hard on this one. <laughs> I worked very hard on this one. Mm-hmm. Um, and it was one of the toughest things I've ever had to do in my life. Mm-hmm. Um, what we're doing is we're featuring an athlete uh, who goes to Amy Nye's gym and Charlie as well. Mm-hmm. Uh, I've actually known this person since 2011 when I first started. Um, and they were in a horrific motorcycle accident and And that's where i'll kind of leave it uh, at that point and it's kind of the road to recovery and the way a relationship was formed between our gym owner and this family is this a male athlete or a female athlete female 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 athlete. athlete. But here's, here's the wonderful thing too, since we're talking about like the relationship, which I think that this is a great thing to um, reflect on is that this coach and owner was reflected in your journey on your, on your um, documentary and is reflected um, in this podcast coming out Monday, which I think is just a fantastic way for people to like get to know like some of our background as far as the taste of what we get to experience every day at our gym. And so I think just seeing that relationship and, and the true um, passion for what it feels or for, for what it looks like to, to really be in this for the right reasons, I should say. And what makes this, what made this very hard to put together is the family gave me a thumb drive mm-hmm. of news footage of kind of her along the way and it made it really hard because I didn't know her before the accident Mm -hmm. and this Mm. got me to know her before the accident and it was really really hard but it is truly amazing to see how far she has come I mean that to me was amazing to see yeah. Like on the footage you had. And I think that it's fair that we should say that there was a little bit of technical difficulties when we were doing our interview. There were. We- so the lips don't match up with the words very good, but it's because this is the first time I've ever tried anything of this magnitude. Mm-hmm. And uh, I need to get better with my battery length in cameras. <laughs> So we lost some footage, so we had to overlay the sound to some of our footage so it doesn't quite match. Yeah. But the content's still good, regardless of if the lips match or not. And this is one that I, that I would suggest you watch on YouTube because mm-hmm. uh, there is a lot of footage and you get to see kind of the transformation from, from before the accident, during the accident, right after the accident to 15 years later and where she is today. Oh, I can't wait. Yeah. Cause I, I, I don't know this person. So it's gonna be exciting for me to see. It really, you'll love it. So I'm excited to put that out. And now it's time for that famous part of the week. The best thing from the internet. Mm-hmm. Okay. I want to start Go. Um, because this is sort of general, but it's national dog day. And I've been enjoying everyone's dog pictures. Um, I will tell you that my dog, Dash, had dental surgery today. (laughs) And I have a little bit of mom guilt, a little bit of dog mom guilt for sending him under anesthesia on National Dog Day. He is right now recovering in the house with big, giant pupils and sort of like bouncing off of furniture and things as he comes out of his, his drunken stupor. But he got three teeth pulled and uh, $500 later, he's, he hopefully will have some fresh smelling breath now as a 10 year old terrier mutt. Happy National Dog Day, Dashy. So that's my favorite thing. So mine's related to National Dog Day. And mine, I think it was a TikTok or it's, it's been posted on a couple of different things, but it's, you know, a dog is just staying there and there's a, a, a 
somebody overlaid a voice and it's like a robotic voice over it. And it was like, you know, here's why I've been a bad boy. My mom took me to go hiking today and she wouldn't let me go say hi to these people. So I jumped over and she was holding the retractable leash and she fell and crashed. And, but all I wanted to do was say hi to these people that loved me. So it's just a really funny video to, you know, just kind of overlaid with that. So, you know, it's like, know shaming, but do we know how to do that voice on TikTok? Is that like a thing? Cause I feel like it's a setting that you do and then you dictate what you want to yeah. say. It must be, but I'm not on TikTok anymore because I'm not allowed to be. So once it gets bought out, I'll I am. Okay. If anyone wants to tell me how to do that, let me know down there because I would like to. I have plenty of content for my puppies in the robot voice. Scott, what's your favorite thing from the internet this weekend? <laughs> it, it is not about National Dog Day. I figured as much. We got that covered. Um, so mine is I found this thing on YouTube that I cannot get enough of. It's not is Russian it Mike Tyson's slap, training? It's, it's not that or <laughs> Russian slap fighting. Okay. It is um it's called Honest Trailers. So this person has makes movie trailers for movies or TV shows or whatever, but they're not to hype the movie up. It's to honestly tell you what the movie is. is. <laughs> and it could be a good movie. Like, you know, they do like the Avengers and they do uh, Deadpool. I, the one that cracked me up, two really, really cracked me up. They do Friends. Yeah. And the part where they're like, <laughs> he goes through the Ross and Rachel relationship, like through the years. And it, like, it's a 45 second we were on a break. Right. That's all in there. <laughs> you know, she loved him, but then he said her name at a wedding and then, blah, you know, it's like all the way through. And then it, and then it's, and then in the end, they fall in love again, but I'm only giving it 10 minutes. Like that's, <laughs> <laughs> that's it's, funny. So it's just really funny. And the other one is they do one for Tiger King. Oh, good grief. <laughs> And it talks about how this would be nothing if it wasn't for the pandemic. Right. You right. know, and that it just was perfect timing and it, and they go through the whole thing. It's really, really funny, but they do them for everything. The first one I saw ever was mean girls. Oh, and it was because of all the stars that were in it. Right. It had Rachel McAdams before she was blah, blah, blah. And it had <laughs> Lindsay Lohan and it had, um, uh, pedophilia from teachers it had blah blah you know, like it just went on and on it's it's really funny. funny really funny so uh check that out it's called honest trailers um and there's there is like eight seasons of them oh Love sweet it. yeah so i really really enjoyed it well i just want to say uh it's been a fun week it has been a crazy week i am barely hanging on by a thread. So thank you for being patient with me tonight. Um, if you like what you hear, make sure you hit that subscribe button, write us a five-star review, um, leave a comment. Oh my gosh. The comments about the burgers last week got out of control and I loved it. Yeah. Good um, stuff. So that we want more of that. Tell us what you think. Tell us, give us your, the team you think, would win the CrossFit games. I'd like um, to hear most embarrassing moments too. Yeah. That'd be fun. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's hear about it. I'm not sure and anything's worse than pooping in a urinal, but you know. Telling you. It's a good one. It was a good one, yes, right? I think it could be worse if you were an adult and did it. <laughs> it's true. Thank goodness I was five yeah. or six. And I do want to say one thing we're looking at is doing a podcast retreat mm -hmm. where we all kind of get together um and record us being goofy for a weekend high kicks lots of high kicks but no pooping in the urinal nope no pooping in the urinal maybe some karaoke that. definitely burgers with bacon and lots uh, of ice cream and wine and wine yes yeah. well that being said we'll see you next time on the clydesdale fitness and friends bye see ya